Hello fellow gamers, my name is Brent Justice and welcome to the FPSReview.com's YouTube channel. Today I've got a brand new SSD to show you today. This is Netax NV7000-Q PCIe Gen 4 x 4 NVMe SSD. And here is the SSD itself in its bare form as I have ripped the heat spreader off to get to all the meaty goodness inside and find out what kind of controller and NAND flash that it utilizes. But it's been fully reviewed at this point. So this is just going to be a quick overview video of this SSD and I'm also going to show you at the end some of the benchmarks that we also had of this SSD and just give you a rundown. Now we've got a full written review on our website at the fpsreview.com. I'm going to put a link in the description. Now that has a full description analysis as well as a full analysis of the benchmarks and a full analysis in the conclusion uh, and summary of our thoughts on the performance of this SSD. So let's talk about the uh, NETAC NV7000-Q. This is a one terabyte model. That's all that's available right now. Will there be other capacities in the future? Uh, it's possible. Here is the label on the back. One terabyte model, as you can see, NV7000-Q. Uh, and as you can see with all the uh, components here, there is room to add more NAND flash. So if they're needed to be or if they wanted to have higher capacities, they could do that, but for right now, the one terabyte is all that they are announcing, launching at this time. And let's talk first about the price and uh, where this fits in the lineup of the NETAC lineup. So this SSD, NV7000-Q, it was shown off at Computex 2024 this year. Uh, it was there, we saw it, uh, it was on display. And now we've got it in our hands. NETAC sent it to us and we were able to do a full review of it. And so, I'm excited to get that performance out there and show everybody. Uh, this is an SSD that is available worldwide. In the US, that launch is coming soon. So this will be available in the US very soon. It is not at the time of this video recording, however, but hopefully in the very near future, it will be available for purchase. And the US pricing, Initac is quoting around US $79 for this. Now we do need to say this about the pricing, that is not necessarily a solidified pricing. So we were quoted, it will be around $79. But what it may actually end up being when it's actually launched, we will have to wait and see. We do not know. But what we were able to do is benchmark it, get its performance, and so what that means is when the pricing is released or when it's available and we see what the finalized pricing actually ends up being online, well then you'll know how it performs and how it compares to other SSDs and you'll be able to make an informed buying decision to look at the price and the performance and see if that matches your needs. And that's just pretty much the goal for us is to uh, benchmark the drive, get the performance out there so that you are aware when it lands how it performs, and then how it compares to other SSDs of a similar vein. Now let's talk first uh, a little bit about what this drive is and how it compares to NETAC's other lineups. So this is a QLC-based SSD. Now, how does that compare? Well, let's start at the top. Let's start at the very top. In 2022, NETAC released this. This is NETAC's NV7000. Okay, this is the NV7000. Also PCIe Gen 4 by 4 NVMe SSD. This is the uh, two terabyte model of this. So what makes the NV7000 different? First of all, it is based on an eight channel controller, eight channel controller. Also, it has an integrated large aluminum heat sink, as you can see, and it has an onboard DRAM cache. It is a high performance Gen 4x4, so it uses different 3D NAND flash than these other two drives. So this was the more expensive one when it launched. So what happened? Well, next, NETAC released this one, NV7000-T. But what makes this a little bit cheaper is, well, number one, they ditched the large aluminum heat sink, so it's just got a heat spreader, but that's okay because they moved from an eight channel controller down to a four channel 
Maxio MAP1602 controller on this one, as well as YMTC 3D NAND flash. Those moves made this cheaper, and because of that, it is also a DRAMless SSD. The Maxio MAP1602 controller is a DRAMless, no DRAM cache. SSD. It uses instead host memory buffer and an SLC cache. So those maneuvers made the NV7000T a cheaper drive when it was launched in 2023. But both the T and the NV7000 are both TLC, 3-bit per cell NAND. So what comes out now? Well, that would be this one now, the Q, the nv 7000 Q. So the move to QLC is obviously a cost saving feature, but in addition, it utilizes the same Maxio MAP1602 controller that the NV7000T uses, which is still 4 channel, and it uses YMTC 3D NAND that is QLC. So the same brand of NAND flash as the NV7000T, same controller but it's QLC instead of TLC, and also just a heat spreader, which I've already ripped off the SSD to see underneath. And that makes for a very cool running, very slim profile SSD that is a value-oriented, but yet high-performing Gen 4x4 NVMe SSD, and that is the goal. So this SSD, being the slim, cool, running form factor that it is, should work fine in small form factor PCs, desktop PCs, mobile PCs, laptops, the PS5. It should fit and not require an external large heat sink. And in fact, in our temperature testing, it did extremely well. Now we've experienced that already with the NV7000T, also the same controller, Maxio MAP1602. And we know that this controller runs very cool. And that was also the case on the NV7000-Q. It does not need a large heatsink, and therefore runs cool and is able to fit in very slim profile systems. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So the rated speeds, this is rated at 7,100 megabytes per second sequential read and 6,200 megabytes per second sequential write. So that does put it at the top of the latest generation Gen 4x4 NVMe SSDs. There are, of course, faster ones out there, but this is in that range. It does, it does meet that range of SSD in the latest generation, and that's the goal. It's supposed to be a cost-saving, value-oriented, high-performing PCIe Gen 4x4 NVMe SSD. As for the endurance rating, it's not too bad, actually. So this has an endurance rating of 640 terabytes written, which actually equals the exact same as NETAX NV7000-T. So both of these SSDs have a 640 terabyte written for the one terabyte model. So the QLC 3D NAND flash is meeting the same terabytes written endurance as the TLC 3D NAND flash on this one. YMTC has put a lot of effort into their 3D NAND flash to improve the PE cycles and endurance. And we'll talk more about that in the review. We've got a deeper analysis on that in the review as well. So that's pretty much a summary of this SSD. And as we mentioned, $79 or around $79 in the U.S., not a solidified price yet. We'll see what it turns out to be and comes out to be when it's actually available in the U.S. And we can see that this is just meant to be a review of the SSD, give you an idea of the performance. So when the pricing and availability comes, then you can compare that with the performance level and see if it matches up uh, to your needs. Uh, but this is, uh, again, has been Netax NV7000-Q QLC-based NVMe PCIe 4.0 Gen 4 by 4 all of those things, SSD, uh, now being released worldwide and coming to the U.S. market very, very shortly with availability. And we'll see what the pricing is when that comes right now. Only a one terabyte model. Will there be others in the future? Nothing confirmed, but there is room for that if NETAC wanted to provide that. 
Okay, now we are quickly going to look at the benchmarks of the MeTAC NV7000-Q that we ran. Again, our written review has this fully laid out and detailed explanations under each graph in that review. Link in the description. Check it out. In our 3 d Mark storage benchmark test, this is a gaming-oriented, it uses gaming traces benchmark for SSDs. The NETAC NV7000-Q did very well in this testing. As you can see, it is much faster, in fact, a large amount faster than the NETAC NV7000, providing a very big uplift from the NETAC NV7000. And in fact, it is almost on par with the NV7000-T, right under it on performance. So very close and near the top of the charts here for this synthetic benchmark. Let's move on. PC Mark 10, another synthetic benchmark. This is the full system drive test. Now here, we can see it falls a little bit down. However, it is not the slowest. It is within the 3000 plus range. And it is faster than the NV7000, the NETAC NV7000. However, the NETAC NV7000T does edge it out just a bit. Now, we also look at PC Mark 10's average access time. And here we find actually pretty decent results. It is producing an average result at 53. It is right there with several of the other SSDs, including the NV7000T. They are very, very close to each other and it is offering a much better access time than the NETAC NV7000, so there is an improvement there. Moving on to PC Mark 10's storage quick system drive benchmarks, we see it fall a bit behind here. Now, this benchmark is different. It focuses on smaller workloads that really benefit from a DRAM cache. Therefore, SSDs that do not have a DRAM cache do perform worse in this benchmark in our experience. And we can see that here. But here's the important part we want to point out. The NETAC NV7000Q and the NETAC NV7000T both do not have a DRAM cache and rely on host memory buffer. However, you can see here the NETAC NV7000Q is slightly faster than the NETAC NV7000T. So the improvements in the NV7000Q are producing a slightly higher result with memory host buffer uh, compared to that NV7000T. So there is a little bit of a performance uplift versus the NV7000T in these smaller workloads uh, with that SSD. Now the NV7000 with the DRAM cache is faster for those workloads and the Samsung 990 Pro is just in a, a whole field of its own over there. Moving on to Passmark performance test, Diskmark. This one takes everything into consideration, including the access time, including the DRAM cache, small workloads, large workloads, everything. And on this one, it does trail behind quite a bit to the other SSDs. It's trailing just behind the NV7000T and the NV7000 by quite a bit. It is the next to the slowest drive in this synthetic benchmark. Now, moving on to everybody's favorite Crystal Disk Mark. We have a screenshot of Crystal Disk Mark in our written review, uh, but here is everything graphed out. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that the NETAC NV7000Q has a sequential read speed of 7100 megabytes per second and a sequential write speed of, of uh, 6200 megabytes per second. And if we look at the results that we are getting here, we are getting those results. It is achieving its quoted and rated and advertised speeds. It is reaching 7235 megabytes per second, 7.2 gigabytes per second of read speed sequential and a write speed right at the 6200 megabytes per second write it's supposed to be getting. So that's within the margin of error for this test. So it is achieving its read and write performance in sequential according to Crystal Dismark. 
And so where does that place that with the other SSDs? Well, that is slightly below the NV7000T, but the NV7000T does, and the NV7000, does have a quoted and rated higher speed. So those are achieving what they are advertised to achieve, as is the NV7000Q. But what this shows is that it is within that high performance range that you want to aim for with a Gen 4x4 NVMe SSD. It is reaching that 7 gigabytes per second read speed. It's there. It can do that. And it is reaching 6 gigabytes per second write speed. So it's at that upper level of performance. Uh, but there are SSDs, obviously, that are rated for higher speeds above that. Those do exist. And as we go through the other Crystal Disk Mark tests, uh, same result here. Uh, now, as we go to the random testing, this is also interesting. Check out the random read performance on the NETAC NV7000Q. It is very good, in fact. It is the second fastest SSD here with random read. That's right, random read, second fastest. It is beating the NETAC NV7000T. It is beating the NETAC NV7000. What it's not beating those on, however, and you will notice this, is the write speed at uh, 3777. It is uh, the slowest. Yeah, that's not good. Next to the slowest. This one is a little bit slower. It is next to the slowest write speed. And so, yeah, that's where it falls behind a bit there. Random write speed, it is going to suffer a little bit. Uh, there are much faster drives up into the uh, 4, 43, 4600, 4300, 4200. So there are drives that are a bit faster there on random writes. And the Samsung 990 Pro just uh, takes off. It just absolutely is, again, in a field of its own on that performance. Now, when we look at the uh, random Q1, T1, T, Q, excuse me, Q1, T1, we find here that it is also competitive again on read, random reads at 75. So it's up there. It's pretty good beating the NV7000T and NV7000. But once again, uh, it's the random writes. It does fall behind as the slowest random write here, uh, matching some of the other slower drives on the random write. So the random performance or random write performance is a little lagging behind other SSDs in this area, uh, but its random read performance is pretty good. All right, good old Addo. So as it's performing here, it does come in a bit under all of the other SSDs with the Addo testing, 6.74 on read, 5.47 on write. It's not the absolute slowest in this lineup, uh, but it is quite a bit under on the uh, write performance, I would say, there. All right, moving on to Disk Bench. Now, this one is interesting. In this, we take a file cop copy. It, the uh, file is on the drive that we're testing, and it we are copying it from the same volume to literally the same volume, and it really pushes the SSD, also fills it up with space. The NETAC NV7000Q uh, does great here. 14 second copy time for this 50 gigabyte file. Uh, that's an absolutely great time. In fact, it's the best time. It's beating a lot of these SSDs on uh, the duration there. So it has a really good file copy time on, I would say, smaller file sizes. And that's where the good news stops because as we move on to this test, this is not an error. What you're seeing is true. The NETAC NV7000Q had a 42 minute duration or 42 minutes to copy a Steam game library file, 243 gigabytes. And that is way slower than every other drive. As you can see, most of the drives are in the one, two, three, or four minute area. One, two, three, or four minute. This one is at 42 minutes. Now there's a reason for that and we'll talk about that in a second. So what this tests is copying a Steam game library file. That is a task that a gamer might do, a very common task a gamer might do. Inside the Steam game library are multiple file sizes of very small files, very large files, and a whole lot of random files. 
And this is where QLC can choke. This is not uncommon. We're not surprised by this result. We would expect this, in fact, on a QLC drive. So this is not an uncommon result. But it is a real-world result that if this is a task you are doing, you need to be aware of. When the buffers are full, the SLC cache, the uh, controller cache, uh, all of the host memory buffer, all, everything that fills up, this is what can happen. It can reach a point where the capacity is filled up enough on the drive and the write speed just bottlenecks, just absolutely bottlenecks. Now, it's not to an absolutely unusable, you know, number. It, it starts out, and we have screenshots of this in our review, it starts out at about 3.3 gigabytes per second uh, writing from our primary SSD copying a file to this SSD, about 3.3 gigabytes per second, and that continues for most of the copy until the end where it just suddenly drops down to about 100 megabytes per second. So from 3.3 to 100 megabytes per second. So that's somewhat serviceable because it's still copying, it's still doing something. It's pretty much at, well, hard drive performance, spinning hard drive performance at that level but it can do it. So very slow spinning hard drive performance that is. Uh, so that is one of the downsides. This bottleneck can happen. We expect that. You just need to be aware of it. But as you can see in the other 50 gigabyte file copy, if it's smaller files, then it's going to fly. It's going to fly. It's just in the very large files, very mixed file sizes of very large files and small files all mixed together. It, it has the potential to choke in those workloads, but if you're not doing those workloads, then it's fine. So it just depends what your workload is. Now let's move on to our game load testing. In this one, we load game saves of Horizon Forbidden West, which uses direct storage. And on this one, uh, it does fairly good. I'd say average performance there, 7.35. It's right in the middle. Um, it is faster than the NV7000T on this game loading. So it is just a bit faster than the NV7000T with game loading, direct storage. Uh, that's a good result in a brand new game. So uh, no complaints there. Mm, however, this one, Forspoken, yeah, we got the slowest time here in Forspoken. Now, Forspoken also uses direct storage, so it's a test of direct storage performance. And this one is very accurate in its reportings because it provides a scene load time between each scene on screen. The game calculates, calculates it, no stopwatch necessary. So this is a very accurate result. We confirmed this. We tried this several times. We did many things to make sure that this performance was consistent, and it was consistent, but the NETAC NV7000Q in this game had a 10.6 second duration load time, and that was much slower than all the other SSDs. Uh, the NV7000T was faster, a lot faster. NV7000 was actually the fastest here. Um, Samsung 990 Pro uh, un under that nine seconds as well. So. Yeah, this one was a little bit slower in this game. So that could be a difference in the direct storage implementation between the two games. It could also just be that it's just slower in this game. So there could be some games where it's really, really fast, some games where it's slower than some other SSDs, and that could be very game dependent. So to try to f take direct storage out of the equation, we also tested Final Fantasy Endwalker Benchmark. It also provides a timed result for uh, load times between scenes and we take that and average that as well and uh, this one is also a very accurate reading uh, it is a DX11 game and uh, no direct storage here and here the NETAC NV7000Q does very well um, right there mid pack 6.1 it is right on par with the NV7000T uh, and faster uh, in fact quite a bit faster than the NV7000 so in this benchmark which is an older benchmark, granted, but it does not use direct storage. Shows that uh, game loading time on it, very good. Scene loading time, very good. 
And just to push that a little further, we also tried the new Dawn Trail benchmark. It is brand new. It has new improved textures and engine capabilities and uh, just improves the load even more that is more modern and current than uh, Endwalker. And it's also up there, 6.7. There are some faster drives, like the Team Group MP44, but uh, it's faster than the NV7000, and it's, again, on par with the NV7000T for scene or game loading time. So uh, in these two non-direct storage benchmarks, the load time is very good on it, actually, and competitive with the NV7000T. They're right together there. Now, spec workstation, we do test professional or workstation loads on SSDs. It is uh, not very good on this. Now, this drive is not positioned to be a professional or workstation level drive, so we're not surprised by this result. Um, it is more, however, than the NV7000. So actually, it's quite a bit more than the NV7000. So if you were doing professional or workstation class workloads, you would find much better performance than the NV7000 on this drive. And it is again on par with the NV7000T. So again, they are very, very close there on the benchmarks. And uh, the 990 Pro though, that's really the one you want if you're going to do workstation class things. Moving on to temperature testing, we look at hardware info and look at the NAND flash or composite sensor information as well as the ASIC sensors. So for the NAND Flasher Composite Sensor 1, 54C on the NV7000Q, and uh, that is very cool, just very cool. Uh, the uh, NV, it's, it's, it's right on par, in fact, with the uh, NV7000. Um, this NV7000T runs a little bit cooler, so this was a little bit warmer, but uh, really good temperatures. We also look at the uh, NAND Flasher Composite Sensor 2, and again, same result, 54. Uh, on this one, it is on par with the NV7000 and a little bit warmer than the NV7000T, but uh, right there, uh, really good temperatures. Definitely not the hottest SSD. But then more importantly, we're looking at the ASIC temp sensor 1 here as well. Now, this is just really good temperatures. That Maxio MAP1602 controller uh, is very good for temperatures. So the NV7000T and NV7000Q have that same controller. Uh, they're right there, neck and neck, close to each other. 45C with the NV7000Q, 43C on the NV7000T. So they're they're neck, they're they're pretty much the same temperature there. Uh, the uh, NV7000 runs really warm. So that eight-channel controller that it's using is just much warmer. 74C, and that's with a large aluminum heatsink. So this Maxio uh, four-channel controller is definitely a lot cooler, runs a lot cooler, and that's why you don't need a beefy heat sink on this. The heat spreader is perfectly fine. You don't need to add an external heat sink, and these temperatures show that. And so that is, again, one of the benefits that we talked about with the performance on this. Uh, so let's do a uh, quick summary, shall we? Okay, and now a quick summary of the NITAC NV7000-Q QLC PCIe 4.0 Gen 4 by 4 NVMe SSD. This is a good addition to NITAC's lineup. The idea of providing a more value-oriented but yet high-performing Gen 4x4 SSD seems like it is working. Uh, we are getting its advertised performance. It has actually really good sequential read and write speeds and really good random read speeds. It does fall a little bit behind in the random writes. In smaller workloads, this is a very fast SSD, which is very close to or on par with the NV7000-T TLC variant. It can provide that in smaller workloads. Uh, if this is a, uh, a work SSD, an SSD you're putting in your laptop, an SSD you're putting in a uh, mobile platform, or an SSD you're putting in a small form factor, or even desktop PC, uh, it is great for casual use. It is great for uh, lighter work. Uh, it is great for gaming. Uh, there's no problems gaming on this. Uh, game load times were fine. Horizon Forbidden West, a brand new game, loaded great on it. So it's comparable to the NV7000T, where the SSD does struggle is in the large files. Uh, moving that game library Steam folder 
uh, that's where it choked. But you just need to be aware that if you were a content creator that was perhaps using a lar very large video sizes and very large videos, may not be the right SSD for you. There are other options, in fact, other options in NETAX lineup. But if you're more of a casual content creator, uh, this could work well for you. It's all going to come down to the price that's offered. So we'll just have to see where that lines up for the U.S. market and the pricing there. Uh, but if you are interested in uh, this SSD, it should be available soon in the U.S. And we'll just have to see where that land, where the uh, price lands on this. But that is the performance that we experienced with it. And all of our benchmarks, again, are on our website. You can read our analysis there and our conclusion there where we go over all of this and that should give you uh, a, a great benchmark to decide where this SSD lands on performance when you compare it by price to other SSDs when it is uh, available in the US. But that is Netax new NV 7000Q QLC SSD. Thank you all for watching this video. Give this video a like if you uh, want to see more of this content and you like what you see here and subscribe. We appreciate it so much. Thank you all for watching this video and have a blessed day.